Good morning, friends. Welcome to my Stampin' Peace studio. I'm happy you're here on this Tuesday morning, April 4th. Um, gosh, I'm tired already. It's only 10 a.m., but um, I wasn't sleeping well, for one thing. And then um, Stampin' Up! has... Um, the last chance list and discounted products start today, um, or did start today at midnight mountain time. And then our um, demonstrator new catalog pre-order start, um, started at 3 a.m. Actually, it was opened up earlier, but that was the scheduled time, 3 a.m. mountain time. But anyways, I couldn't sleep and I thought, you know, it was 2.30, I think, when I was still awake. I had read, I did everything I could do to fall asleep. And I thought, I'm just gonna get up and go online and see if by chance the pre-order um, is up and running a little bit early. And um, it was. So I sat there and placed my pre-order. Um, I tried to go back to sleep, um, couldn't. So got up and read some more. And then by, I wanna say probably six o'clock, I was um, working. So I feel like I've put in a good full day or half, at least half a day already, but all is good. I'm so excited about the new products. Um, we are not able to pre-order everything in the annual catalog. They just give us a select list, but um, it actually was quite a long pre-order this time because I did focus on getting the five new in colors as well as all of the new and retiring colors that will make up our core collection. So that alone took quite a bit. And then I ordered a few um, suites and bundles and individual stamp sets. So um, I'm super excited for when it comes uh, later this week. Uh, that means two things. I may do a um, unboxing video. <clears throat> And then I'll also have Andrea here and we will be um, prepping to send out catalogs and also we will um, be getting ready for my 2023 to 2025 In Color Club. <coughs> Excuse me. And information is coming out on that very soon and I hope you will be a part of that. There's um, two options to choose from. In the one um, option, I call it just the basics. And in the other option, you get um, more in color product. And I call it, I want it all option. So look for that very soon. Um, I was working on that um, uh, advertisement or email to send out. And um, I was working on that earlier this morning. So. It's almost ready to send out and I'm super excited about it. I've already had people asking, will I be doing it again this year? Um, gosh, I don't even know how many years I've been doing it, but um, I love it because the greatest advantage for all of you is that you may want all of those new in colors, but to purchase them all at once is, um, you know, heavy on the pocketbook, right? Hard on the pocketbook. Um, or your purse or bank or whatever you want to call it. Um, but this way you can get all of those in color products that you want, but you can space the payments out over a five month period. And then each month I um, simply bill you and then ship to you the in color products for that specific color of the month. So lots of fun. I'm glad you're here today and I'm going to show you a fun technique and I've pulled out a stamp set I haven't used in quite a long time. It's called the In The Moment stamp set. One of my favorites. I love the, um, the images that are drawn or sketched and um, this one lends itself really well to the technique I'm going to be showing you as do some of our other stamp sets. Um, and this is one that is in our current annual catalog and will carry over to the new catalog. So I figured it's a good product of the week. Um, I already have some other cards in addition to what I'm showing you today to use for um, Facebook Lives later 
in the week. I'm going to flip my camera around now, and while I do that, would you please share this live video and invite others to join us this morning? And we do have a new month, so I have a new host, co host code for those placing online orders. <coughs> um, I have to tell you, I had to write it in really fast because I was trying to print it off. My printer was out of both kinds of ink, the um, color and the black. So I put in the, took out the old cartridges, put in the new, and I kept trying to print, and it's just spitting out blank pages. So obviously, I need to um, reset the printer somehow. So, um, but doing that would have made me late for my Facebook Live, and I didn't want to do that. So just bear with me for today, and I'll get the correct one printed soon. All right, so let's get started. I didn't mean to show you that. Look at the sample card, but that's okay. Because I'm sure when you saw that, you thought, ooh, that's a lot of coloring. Big deal, Mary. We color all the time. Well, guess what? It's not all coloring. So I'm using this image and stamping it in a piece of basic center of a piece of basic white cardstock that measures three inches by three and a quarter inches. All right. Now I'm going to set this aside because I'm going to be stamping that same image a few more times. And to do that, I'm bringing in some um, scrap paper. I love the small grid paper, which is retiring. And um, gosh, if you like it as much as I do, um, be sure to order it. It will be sold until the inventory sells out. Um, and I'm not sure that, I don't think it is just yet. The Stamparatus is sold out, however, not this small grid paper. And as you can see, I use it for a lot more than just the Stamparatus. I even use it um, for planning my uh, one sheet wonders, card sketches, things like that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be doing what's called paper piecing. And that means instead of coloring certain areas, I'm actually going to be stamping those on other um, paper. In this case, I'm using the Pretty Prints cardstock. So I'm going to be stamping the pants or jeans, um, the woman's top, and the two pillows. And you can see one pillow is right there behind her legs, top and bottom. So let me show you how I do that, and then we will cut out all of these different pieces. So I'm going to do my stamping first. I'm using this Bermuda Bay color for um, her pants or her jeans. So, and you notice, I don't, let me show you again. I don't need to ink up the entire stamp. I really just need to ink up the part that I'm stamping on my additional paper, in this case, the Pretty Prince DSP, and that is the jeans or the pants. This technique is a great way to use up some of your DSP scraps as well. Now on this piece of um, Blackberry Bliss Designer Series paper, also from the Pretty Prince DSP, I wanna stamp those pillows. All right, so I inked up the area right around those pillows. And I'm just going to stamp like this. Okay, so you can see I've got the two pillows there. And then lastly, I'm going to use this piece of Calypso Coral. And I want to stamp the shirt 
in this. And I'm actually going to um, just cut off a smaller bit here. Let's do this just to save on my paper. But like I said, it's a great way for you to use up some of your DSP scraps. And I'm just there. So now you see I have the shirt. Now let me put away this ink <clears throat> and my stamp. And the next thing I'm going to do is use my scissor snips to cut out these various pieces. And I don't know if you can hear that buzzing behind behind me, or I should say in front of me, behind my computer, but um, now my printer is making noise back there. And when you do this, take a good look, because like here, the arms of the woman are sitting on top of her knees, so I'm going to cut right along where just the pants are shown. So I'm going to cut out that little corner of her sleeve and her arm. And when you're doing the paper piercing or paper piecing technique, you can feel free to cut along, cut right along those black lines or the stamped lines of your image. Because when you adhere these to the overall stamped image, everything will line up. perfectly with the black lines that are already stamped in the main image. I love using this technique when I can use DSP. It allows me to use DSP for clothing. Um, I've also used it on stamped images that are, are um, like vases or flower pots, things like that. But you really can use it on any of your um, images that you want to fill in, that fill in a large area of image. Now here I wanna point out, I'm gonna go right up to her hair because this is part of her shirt. That little section right there is part of her shirt. So I'm cutting there and then from there, I'm cutting down the hairline and then I'm going right across the line, that top line of her shirt. I'm not worrying about the hair that's sticking down over her shirt. Because again, when I put this paper piece on here, all of the lines will match up and I will be able to see her hair appear just like it does on the white cardstock right now. Now for cutting out the pillows, this is a wee bit tricky. Not really, but I just want to point it out to you. Notice there's the portion of pillows above her legs, and then there's a little portion of pillow below the legs. So I'm actually going to be cutting out each of those areas, which of course cuts out separately because they're divided by her legs. Oops, let me look at this before I feel like I'm missing something here. Okay, I wanted to be sure I was cutting the right line. So as you can see, this full stamped image becomes a guide. Always stamp the full image on your um, cardstock, whatever cardstock you want first, so that you can use it as a guide when you're cutting out your smaller pieces. And you can do as much or as little of this as you want. If you um, don't want to fuss with the pillows, 
you can simply do the pants and the shirt. I could have even add, added the mug or um, the window seat with paper piecing as well, but I'm keeping it to these three sections. So now I'm ready to put all of this together. The easiest way to add these is with your multi-purpose glue. The reason being, I want to be able to move these pieces a bit if I need to, to get everything ma uh, matched up as it should be. Even with the paper piecing, it should look like every bit of the image just flows together. You can see all of the lines are matching up just the way they're supposed to. So again, feel free when you're cutting, doing the paper piecing, cutting the additional paper to cut right on the black lines that form the images. And try to scoot that just a wee bit. There we go. So I'm going to leave the paper piecing at that point. All right. Now I want to go back and show you. When you first saw my sample, did any of you realize that this was paper piecing? If you got a close look, you may have noticed because I've caught some of the print in the um, Blackberry Bliss pillows, all right? So that could be a giveaway. You can use any kind of DSP you want. Some of those ginghams would have been really cool with the clothing or the pillows. Um, and now I could leave it just like this. I could make a black and white card with a punch of color, and these are my three punches of color. But instead, I'm going to go ahead and um, color in part of the images. And I'm using um, skin tone blends for several parts of my image. I'm coloring this girl's, this woman's um, skin tone with number 1000, which is the lightest of the skin tone colors. And of course you can blend the various skin tone colors together as well. This woman's skin looks very much like mine. So I went for a walk yesterday, late afternoon. It was warm enough, I was in shorts and a t-shirt. Um, I think I was the only person in a short in shorts and t-shirt when I went walking and people were looking at me kind of strange and I thought, what's going on? You know, I just, it's warm. Anyways, but that was not the case with all the other people I saw walking. Now, also from the Skin Tones collection, oh, but what I was going to say is I was in shorts and t-shirt. Maybe it wasn't that I was in shorts and t-shirts. Maybe it was that I am so pale. It was like blinding them. I don't know. But you know how it is if you're very light-skinned like me. When we first come out after winter, we almost glow. We're so pale. But give me a few, few weeks of yard work and I'll get a little bit of color. I like a little color, but I'm also careful about my skin because um, melanoma does run in my family.
So this marker that I'm using, the Stampin' Blend that I'm using, is also from the Skin Tones collection, or I guess they're called Naturals collection. I don't know. I feel like we've changed the name since they first came out. Um, but this is number 300. There are 10 of these in the collection, and they go from lightest to um, darkest. So the highest number is the lightest shade, and the darkest number um, is the lower shade, which kind of mixes me up at times. Now for her hair, again, I'm pulling two colors from that same collection, and I am using, oh, that's not the one I wanted. Um, I'm using 500 and I'm just filling in part of her hair. I guess you could say she's got some low lights now. And then I'm filling in with 800. So I'm, for her hair, I'm using 500 and 800. But again, you pick what you like. You can easily chain up, change up all the skin tones, the hair, the um, wood lattice, whatever you want on this image. And I'm using dark um, Bermuda Bay for her hair clip in the back. Um, notice too, and I, I think I did this, but notice right here, She's got a little bit of her back showing. So you wanna fill that in with the skin tone and then also underneath here, a little bit of her arm showing. And then I'm using this pretty dark soft sea foam color for her mug. I like the way all these colors coordinate. Um, I'm going to fill in the bench seat. I'm just going to assume she's got a cushion here. So I'm filling it in with the light Blackberry Bliss. And then I'm going to go around some of the areas with the dark shade of Blackberry Bliss because you know she's probably getting a little shadow behind her or under her as she's sitting on that window seat. Okay. And then lastly, I'm using Pool Party Light and I just am very lightly going to shade in these areas. I'll call it the outside sky as she's looking through the windows. And because this whole image is um, that drawn sketch look, I'm not worried about coloring this perfectly. I kind of like that I'm just doing some strokes of color in there. And then the final thing I'm going to do is a little blending with my blending brush. So I'm going to use a, um, flip this a little bit. I'm going to use a small blending brush with my Pool Party ink. When you're using these blending brushes, remember to start off on your scrap paper first and then blend on to your cardstock. This is super, super light. You can keep it as light as you want, or you can add another layer of color and another and another until you get the desired tone you're looking for. Looks like I got a spot of glue there. Okay. 
And doing this just kind of grounds the whole image. Um, sometimes I like things stark white, sometimes not as much. But this is one where I really felt like I kind of want to ground this by putting some color all the way around. And I like how that looks, so I'm going to stop. Now let's put our card together because obviously somebody would like to win a card, right? I'm using the basic white thick cardstock. And then I have a piece of Bermuda Bay which if I remember correctly, let me look, is a retiring color. So if you love this color, get it while you can. I have not looked at the inventory status report to know what products, what discontinued or, or um, retiring and discounted products may be sold out. But I've cut that to five and three eighths by four and one eighth because I just want a very small border of white going around it. And I also want a very small border of white going around my stamped um, cardstock. I should say stamped, pieced, and colored cardstock. Pulling off some of these larger edges. Because that's how I'm rolling this morning. It's always interesting when I'm um, doing Facebook Lives at times like this that are not on my regular schedule because I get um, some different people watching. Like I just see Shannon Fox. Um, so her first time watching today, I'm so glad you're here and I'm so happy that you are going to give this paper piecing technique a try. Does anybody remember, I, I have no idea what the name is, you know how I am with remembering um, titles and names and things, but we had... Um, a similar style of stamp set that um, I guess it could be like a mother and daughter or like a mother and a little girl. I always thought of them as sisters because my girls are five years apart. So we have big sister Andrea and little sister Emily. But that is um, a stamp set I use. Some of you may have that. That is one that I have used for paper piecing in the in the past. And I paper pieced the girls' dresses, but then watercolored um, the rest of the image. And it was really, really very lovely. Um, we have a masculine set in a similar style that you could use for masculine birthdays, Father's Day, that sort of thing. And um, it too um, could be used with the paper piecing technique. Okay, one tip I want to give you right here is I've pre-cut, and many of you know I've got my um, two bins that contained pre-die cut pieces. My daughter did that for me. Um, I've got the stylish shapes dies and the tailored tag dies like that. Um, so they're ready to grab and use when I want them. But one thing I am going to point out to you, I started stamp it, trying to stamp this same stamp using this block, and I kept thinking, why can I not get this straight? I'm usually pretty good at that. And then it occurred to me, I'm not using the block that I'm comfortable with. The reason I was having such a hard time is this block is basically the same size as my die cut piece, which means I can't see the edges. So that's one problem I have with that. So I went to a bigger block because now when I stamp this, and it's hard for me to look above without getting my 
head in the screen. So let me give it a try. But now I can see the edges. Now that's not perfectly straight. Let me try one more time. But do you see, if you could have seen the ones I did before, this is so much better. But this allows me to see the edges of what I'm using to stamp, or what I'm stamping on, I should say. Well, that's better. Um, so, tip. If you're stamping onto something small or pre-cut, whatever, use a block, use a clear block that's actually larger than that surface you're stamping on. It just is so helpful to be able to see the outlines of that piece. And now I'm going to add this sentiment to my card front. Here's another tip I'm going to give you. We've already raised up this portion of the card on dimensionals. So I'm not putting dimensionals all the way across here because having the dimensionals just on the right end elevates this to the same level is that if I put it all the way across, it's actually going to be like a little bump because this level has one dimensional on it, the right side, and this side has two dimensionals on it, one here and one here. So it would look uneven. If that's what you're going for, great. But um, I usually try to keep the different levels even. And you can even, to make sure this part stays down where you want it, you can put a little bit of uh, multi-purpose glue or use a glue dot, something like that, so that it's not, um, whoops, so it's not lifting up where you don't want it to. All right, what do you think? What do you think? Vesta, was that tip helpful for you? With, I assume you're talking about the stamping, um, using the larger stamping block, right? What do you think? Okay, now if you wanted to step up this card a little bit more, I would suggest that you use um, an embossing folder on this background card stock before you put your card together. That's another great way to... Um, Take your card, what do I want to say? Take your card up another notch to step it up to add a little extra interest to your card, okay? And I love that sentiment. You're in my thoughts. And that's a good card to send to so many different people for so many different reasons, right? Everybody's got something going on in their life and everybody appreciates knowing that they have been thought of, okay? Okay. Do we need to add a little bit of bling to this? I feel like that's a silly question when I ask this group. So you think about that and suggest to me what bling you would use on this card, okay? Something that's not going to take away from the focal point, but add another level of interest to it. And while you're thinking about a suggestion of an embellishment, I want to show you these um, Stampin' Blends. And I bet, Tony, I know you're on here, or Jean, some of my um, demo friends. What is the correct name of these? Naturals Blends? Natural Skin Tones? Something like that. Um, maybe I've just been calling them something wrong all this time. And they are numbered. So they go from number 100 being the darkest, and then they go up in intervals of 100 to 1,000, with 1,000 being the lightest, which is what I used for the skin tone here, okay? So you can mix and match these to your heart's content. Some people think, well, maybe that's too pink for skin tone. So they might add um, some of this one, which has a little more yellow in it. And that kind of changes the skin tone also. Do you see that?
And of course, there's a whole range um, going from light skins tones to dark. Natural tones. Tony, I knew you would know. <laughs> okay, Lori too, naturals. Um, is that my age? I don't know. Or just too many things on my mind that I have such a hard time remembering names. Okay, suggestions for um, embellishments. You gave me no suggestions. I can't believe it. Usually this audience is shouting out. I mean, I can hear the words coming through the screen from the different voices of your ideas for embellishments. By the way, those Naturals Tones Stampin' Blends are in the annual catalog, um, and I just love them. I absolutely love them, not just for skin tones, but um, for different things in nature, wood, um, all kinds of good stuff. Trees, plants. Okay, still no suggestions on embellishments. You guys are shocking me. You must be kind of sleepy or something. Ooh, I kind of like the gold. Kind of like that gold. Nope, nothing there. Um, mm, no, nope, that's not doing it for me either. Look at these. Oh, these would be nice. Okay, Kathy Jordan. Kathy Jordan is a wonderful lady and member of my Mary Stampers team, and she comes up with ideas like this one that she just typed that I never would have thought of. Um, and I love it when I get to learn something from other people as well. I also noticed a lot of times she chooses stamp sets that I probably would not choose myself, but I think maybe that's because we live in different areas of the country as well. But I don't know how well this is showing up, how well you can see this. But she has suggested use some, um, it kind of blends in, but you do get a little sparkle. But she has suggested using Wink of Stella to be the steam coming up from the coffee. And I do like that idea. I'm also going to put a little Wink of Stella on her hair clip. All right, what do you think? Should I pull out two embellishments? We can do the matte gold sequins, or we can use some of these iridescent pastel gems, both of which are coming back in our new annual catalog. Any thoughts on that? I have a feeling Kathy was up in the wee hours placing an order also. Any other demonstrators on here that were ordering during the night? Or anybody at all, customers, you might have the opportunity to um, have taken the opportunity to order some uh, last chance products, things that are on sale. And Jenny Graber is saying iridescent. Hmm. Okay. So now I'm like, now I have to, all these colors would go, to be honest. And I'm trying to decide. This one kind of blends in a little too much, but I kind of like these. Just another um, bold color. I think I'm going to go with these. And I'm only going to use the three small ones, not a large one. I feel like there's a lot of small details on this image. So I don't want to take from that by putting on something big and bold. All right, everybody. Is anybody interested in having their name entered into a drawing to receive this card made in the Facebook Live? Anybody at all? Oh, by the way, there is a new stamp set in this style. Um, oh, what's it called? Co um, coffee time or something like that. But it's such a good one. It's not on the pre-order, so I can't get it for a while, not till May 2nd. But it is definitely 
one that's at the top of my list. I absolutely love it. Okay, so take a good look at the stamp set in the moment. It's also got some other great sentiments. I used You're In My Thoughts. Sometimes the most productive thing you can do is relax. Okay, that's part of the reason why I switched yesterday's Facebook Live to today. I worked all weekend and yesterday I decided I was giving myself time to do some things around my house that I have been not been getting to. Um, and I just kept going and going. And then I was putting together a um, computer desk, almost finished, realized I had one piece on backwards. So I switched that and it was getting closer and closer and closer to my Facebook Live time. And I thought, no, I just, I need to breathe a little bit. I need to slow down and gather myself. So that's what I did. And that's the reason why I switched to um, the Facebook Live to today. And then this one, you're always so good to others, be good to yourself too. Don't we always need that reminder, right? Especially as women, I think we tend to want to take care of everybody and everything. And we forget to take care of ourselves. Okay, so if you are interested in having your name put in, in the drawing to receive this card, simply type in the comments now, in the moment, in the moment. And I will choose or draw one name to receive this card. In the moment. Are there any questions? I'm going to quickly scroll back and see if I missed any questions along the way. And thank you to everybody who um, joined me today live, um, whether this is your first, first time or you've been with me hundreds of times. I appreciate you all. And if you're watching this on replay, please know that you are just as much appreciated. And if you like what you saw here in this video, please share it with others. And I will be putting this um, on my blog in the next few days. And I will have cutting dimensions, all of the Stampin' Up! products used, um, still photos in addition to the video replay. All right, everybody. Oh, Lori says she ordered all her retiring products that she wanted and she'll get the new stuff later. Sounds like a great plan, Lori. All right, everybody, have a good Tuesday. Oh, I do want to tell you, I have to move Wednesday's Facebook Live. Um, the training program or one of the training programs I'm in um, meets by Zoom just twice a month, um, two hours at a time. And they do... Um, change the times, dates and times each month so that it can accommodate um, people in, at different, different people at different times. There's no perfect time for everybody. So um, our first one for April is um, this Wednesday, seven to nine. So um, I do believe I have the times correct on that. So if that is the case, I will double check it. And in which case I would do a Facebook Live on Thursday, but I will post here so you know exactly when that will be. All right, everybody, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.